Now, it might be strange for some of you to know to start a leadership journey with, with a poet. I mean, certainly my team actually thought I was completely crazy. But if you've ever heard David White speak, and if you know of his work, his words have a wisdom and a poignancy that just cut through all those executive defenses and enter right into to your heart. So David got up and in this you know, English brogue, he's an Englishman, he started to weave his poems with stories, stories from his own life, a time he had a terrible argument with, with his daughter, the time that he lost his very best friend, and the moment in his life when he decided to leave his corporate job and go into his calling as a poet. And all the, all the while he was talking about his poems and he framed this with something that he called courageous conversations. Courageous conversations are the conversation we are not having. These are the conversations that we're afraid to have with the world, with our customers, with our colleagues, with our friends, with ourselves. And we listened for over two hours. And during that time, no one moved. No one got up to get coffee. No one got up, to, got up to go to the bathroom. No one got up to have a smoke, which in France is unusual. No one made a peep. And at the break, you know, we designed an activity and we asked each leader to pair up with another leader and to really share the courageous conversations, conversations that they weren't having with their teams back at home. You know, we created a safe container for this to happen. So, of course, they were my team and I didn't have anyone to share with. So I took my little notebook and I sat in the corner and I wrote down, you know, here are the courageous conversations I'm not having with them. But as I looked out, I saw how much heart and soul they were putting into this exercise. I mean, they were really, really sharing things that they had never shared before. And I started feeling really out of integrity. So at the close of the session, I knew I had no choice. I got up, my legs were shaking and my hands were kind of trembling. And I took my crinkled paper and I admitted to them that I was afraid, that I was worried that maybe they didn't trust the direction I wanted to go. Maybe they wished I had more answers that I didn't have. I told them that I needed their help. I couldn't and shouldn't run this business alone. And then I braced for the worst. But as I gazed up, and I looked out into the audience, I didn't see disappointment. I saw truly empathetic, even tearful stares back at me. And then the most extraordinary thing happened. Somewhere in the back, a leader who was particularly skeptical of this work looked down at his shoes, his hand timidly rose, and he said, I'm an imposter. I pretend to know things that I don't just to impress my team. And then another hand went up. Another leader said, I don't really listen. I just listen to validate my point of view. A third leader, his hand went up. He said, I am terrified of the unknown, and that's why it takes me so long to make decisions. In retrospect, this whole thing seems a little crazy, right? I mean, it could have been completely suicidal for me, not to mention my team, who was so honest and courageous in what they did. But that afternoon changed something. It changed something in a way that I could never have predicted. I mean, we all just set down our suits of armor, the ones we carry around as leaders, and we started to share in a different way. So all that burden, that complexity that we'd been hiding from each other, we could now get out in the open. And from that day forward, we could begin to co-create our future with so much less fear.